balloon are all I need For you hold my destiny Come on and help me worship him Sing it church You alone are all I need In you alone In you alone I am complete Come on and sing it to him You alone are all You alone are all I need You alone are all I need For you hold my destiny You hold my destiny You alone are all I need In you alone In you alone I am complete Sing draw me Draw me Draw me Draw me Lord I'll come running And I'll come running after you I'm gonna run after you Jesus Draw me Draw me Draw me Lord And I'll come running after you Gonna run after you Jesus Gonna run And I'll come running after you Lord I'm gonna run after you And I'll come running after you I'm gonna run after you Jesus And I'll come running after you Father in the name of Jesus Christ As we get ready to go into the word of God Minister to your people on this morning Give them that assurance that you gave me when you gave me this understanding in Jesus name I pray someone say a good amen so on this morning's broadcast I want to talk about if you do these things you will never fall now this is very very personal to me and I'll give you a background story on this why this is so personal to me you see, at the age of 16, I had given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I had gotten saved, and I was on fire. But I didn't understand everything about Christianity. I still don't understand everything about it. We walk with God. As you walk with God, you learn, you grow in your relationship. You gain more and more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So what happened is I backslid. I certainly did. I backslid. And... Then I got saved again at the age of 19, January the 3rd, 1993, 2.30 in the morning. And you know, after I had gotten saved, I always had this little doubt in the back of my mind. Am I going to be able to stay saved this time? Is there any answers in the Bible that if I do certain things, I'll never backslide. You know, and the enemy was using that against me. Well, what if you backslide? What if you backslide? But I needed to see in God's word that there was simple, clear-cut instructions that if I apply myself, I'd just never fall. I'll never backslid. And one day, I was reading my Bible. This was in the 90s. And as I read my Bible, I was in Second Peter chapter 1. And as I read my Bible, I came across these scriptures and it revolutionized my life because in this chapter was the outline from God that if you do these things, you'll never backslide. And I want to share this with you. And this is personal. So I want to jump right into verse 4, which says, whereby... This is 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 4 through 10. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, by these promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature, his divine nature, as God's divine nature and his son Jesus Christ, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And now, beginning at verse 5 through 10, he begins to give us this list of things that we need to apply. And when I say apply, th this stuff comes from the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. These are fruits of the Holy Ghost. You can't bear this on your own. You, gotta, you can't do this on your own. You got to be washing the blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost 
fuels, empowers you, and enables you to be able to do this. He said, and beside this, giving all diligence. You got to be diligent in your faith, sage. Giving all diligence. Notice what he says. Add to your faith virtue. That means you have to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. God is telling you to do this. He says, you need to add to your faith virtue virtue. The word virtue means excellence. It means modesty. It means purity. So he said, add to your faith virtue. And then you need to add to virtue knowledge. The word knowledge right there means moral wisdom. It comes as you study to show yourself approved unto God. God is not going to take the word of God and shove it in your head and in your heart. But as you yield yourself and spend time listening to the word like you are right now and meditating on the word and reading the Bible, the Holy Ghost imparts the word of God into your heart, into your mind, into your your soul. That's what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 119 verse 130. The entrance of his words give light. It gives understanding unto the simple. So as the word of God enters our hearts, the Holy Spirit illuminates our minds, our spiritual minds, and causes us to understand the written word of God. It is so much joy and it's a pleasure when the word of God begins to come alive to you. You just can't get enough of it. So he says, add to your faith virtue which is excellence, modesty, purity, and the virtue, knowledge, which is moral wisdom. Verse 6 says, and add to knowledge, temperance. The word temperance right there means self-control. The help the Holy Ghost will develop that fruit of self-control on the inside of you. So we add to knowledge, self-control. That's as we yield to the Holy Ghost at work in us. And then he says, add to self-control, patience. The word patience means endurance. Some of us can endure nothing, but we are learning to endure. That's fruits of the Holy Ghost at work in our lives. So first he said, add to your faith virtue, add to virtue knowledge, add to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and we all can use some of that, including moi, me. <laughs> And to patience, godliness. Godliness means reverence, respect towards God, respect towards the things of God, respect and honor towards church leadership. Your pastor, I'm not saying worship your pastor, but I'm saying honor him as a man of God. Show respect to that pastor. The Bible says, submit yourselves to them who have authority over you. Are you listening to me? This is the word of God. You can read that in, I believe it's Hebrews 13, 17. It's in the word of God. You hearing me, saints? So he says, and then you got to add to godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness is love of the brethren. Don't be hateful towards your people in God. Don't be hateful towards no one for that fact. Are you hearing me? Brotherly kindness, that's having affection for your brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. Genuine love. You care about them. You grieve when they grieve. You mourn when they mourn. When they rejoice, you rejoice. I got a problem with people who, who can't feel my pain. Man, if I'm in pain and you genuinely love me, you should feel it. When you are in pain, I feel your pain. When something gets you upset, I get upset. Why? Because we connected. But if you can't get if you can't get burdened and you can't weep when I weep, something's wrong somewhere. Now watch this. So he says, add to godliness, brotherly kindness, and then to brotherly kindness, charity, love. And that word love right there is unselfishly, unselfishly giving of yourself for the benefit of another. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He laid his life down to benefit all of us. Now watch this. We come into the point. Listen to what he says in verse 8. If these things be in you and abound and flourish, they will make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying if these things are operating in your life, you will be very fruitful in the knowledge and in the things of God. Listen to verse 9, stern warning. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Well, the Holy Ghost is answering me and you. Well, now 
you can see why some people don't have no spiritual intelligence. People who care about them, they can't even recognize you care about them. They can't even recognize you love them because the Bible says whoever lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off because they have forgotten that they were purged from these old sins. People who, people who claim to be Christians and they can't see spiritual things. I understand they're baby Christians, but I'm talking about people who've been walking with God for a while. You ought to know better. You ought to know you can't watch that. You ought to know you can't look at that. You ought to know you can't indulge in that. Come on, saints. Dress better. Cover yourself up. Come on. Modesty. Don't let people see what only your husband supposed to see and vice versa. Come on, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about trying to, trying to, I'm talking about modesty that's from the heart. I'm talking about purity and decency. Come on, saints. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I know that's tough. It's tight, but it's going to be all right. I got to tell you the truth. Now we come to the main part. This was my answer as it's found in verse 10. Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling an election sure. Here's the big one. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Wow. When I got a hold of that scripture, I realized, now I see why I backslid when I was 16. I didn't understand this. Those things, all of those things were not at work in my life. But I realized it. Yes, after I got saved as a 19-year-old young man. And when I got a hold of this scripture, I never went backwards. I never backslid again. Did I make mistakes? Did I sin? Everyone have fallen short of the glory of God. But I'm still hanging on to the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not have to backslide. Don't accept it. I found it in the word. If you do these things, you'll never fall. You'll never backslide. You'll never go back into the world. But you got to do them. He said, Jesus said in John chapter 8, 31, 32, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mighty God. Isn't this awesome? That you do not have to backslide. And when I read that, that doubt that the enemy had been beating me with in my mind because I had backslid as a 16-year-old Christian, that enemy was completely defeated. The devil knows he don't stand a chance because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He's under my feet. I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. Isn't our God just awesome? I want to give you an opportunity right now to support this ministry, support the work of God, support the preaching of the gospel. We can't do this without you. And many of you are standing with us. And me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy, we are grateful. I'm giving you the invitation to visit us online to sow a seed, give a donation, offering. No gift is too big or too small. And we are grateful for whatever it is that you can support us with. Visit us online right now. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is PayPal.me forward slash SeanPinder Ministries. PayPal dot me forward slash sean pinder ministries you can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry just remember to make your checks and money orders out to sean pinder ministries p.o box 2726 mckinney texas 75070 make your checks and money orders out to sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you. 
we join our faith with you right now. We pray that God would bless you. We pray that God would keep you. We pray that God would put his hands of favor on your life. We pray that God would open closed doors before you. We pray that God would cause you to prosper beyond measure. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We love you. God bless you. We appreciate you. We're looking forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. Love you. Take care now. Bye-bye.